What is up, Kratics? Welcome back to the series where I customize and review past DLC and OG vehicles. I never got the chance to because I didn't start making car customization videos till about late 2015. As always, guys, let me know in the comments what car from late 2015 and older you want to see me customize next, and I'll display the most liked vehicle suggestion comment in the next customization video. So, in today's video, we're going to be customizing the Bravado Rumpo Custom. So this van released with the Further Adventures in Finance and Felony update in June of 2016 and can be purchased from a Summer San Andreas website for $130,000. Now I do want to mention right out of the gate here guys that this vehicle basically has no visual customization which is a bit unfortunate but I guess you can say it basically comes with all the customization already on it when you compare it to the normal Rumpo that it's based on so I guess there's that. Now this one is obviously lifted and has off-road tires and it's converted from rear wheel drive to 4x4 which makes it an off-roader it's pretty cool however it still remains in the Vance class even with all those off-road changes now the Rumpo name was first introduced in GTA 3 and was also featured in Vice City GTA Advance San Andreas Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories as well but obviously the one we have in GTA 5 was a brand new model. But anyways, in terms of performance, the Rumpo Custom is again in the Vance class and is one of the fastest vehicles in that class alongside the Gang Burrito. It's really track dependent, but they're very close and very similarly matched. But the Gang Burrito does have a higher top speed and the Rumpo Custom is a bit top heavy. So depending on the track and the corners and the bumps and the angles of the track and stuff and curbs, the Gang Burrito is just a bit more consistent. But the Rumpo is still a great buy regardless. But anyways, in terms of what the Rumpo Custom is based on, it's primarily based on the Sports Mobile Classic 4x4, which is a custom off-road van built from the Ford E-Series van platform. Plus it also takes some inspiration from the Chevy Express van as well with its headlights. Honestly, I think it's pretty unique looking and sort of a cool idea to make like an off-road camper style van. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out the customization of the Rumpo Custom. What are we doing today? All right, Rumpo Custom. Okay, we got armor, brakes, Engine, kind of engine I like horn. I think I'll put a truck horn on this. I mean, because <laughs> the stock horn is kind of wimpy, right? I mean, <laughs> definitely truck horn on that. Usually, I don't touch horns on these builds, but I mean, this thing is kind of big and brawny. I think it kind of goes with it. Um, headlights. Yeah, I'll do xenons. Uh, plates. Black backgrounds. Um, I have like an off-roadish plate for this. Uh, let me see where I have it. Oh, past it. Whoops. Somewhere here. All the way at the top. Muddy. There we go. Works out with this off-road van. Respray. Um, so for this, I was thinking like a metallic gray, but I don't know. Um, I mean, the metallic gray does look good. But to me, I mean, I, I do kind of want to make it look sort of like a... Like maybe like an FBI off-road raid van. I don't know. Something different. Um, so I, I think a nice black will look good on here and the matte black um, I don't really like it too much I just threw it on there to get rid of the pearl um, but I, I think the the crew black like it just looks fantastic almost especially when we black out with the uh, tints it's gonna look really really good so a uh, crew black it's just a bit darker than normal black you can see the difference there so the crew black is a bit better I think it goes super well with this a problem for this thing goes on the hood okay Suspension. I'm not sure why you would lower this. <laughs> anyway, you want to lower your off-road build. I mean, they should really give you the option to raise it a little bit, but you know. All right. Anyways, transmission, turbo, wheels. So the stock wheels on this thing are pretty cool. They're very, very similar to the Coil Brawler. That's probably where they just got the wheel model from. Um, and it also has the spares and the well, the spare on the back and the spare on a roof to match. Now, unfortunately, when you change the wheel, as with like every single <laughs> off-road vehicle in GTA, the spare does not change with it. So definitely be, um, you know, just keep that in mind when you're going through wheels when you want to change them, uh, because it will not match. 
Um, and this used to be the off-road tread pattern back in the day, uh, but in one of the DLC updates, Rockstar did change that. Um, so we go to off-road, you can see that pattern is no longer available. So the only pattern you have is this one, and then there's one other one when you put custom tires, which I'll show here in a second, but uh, you, you cannot match your spares. So that's a kind of a bit annoying. So a lot of people that have this vehicle, they do keep the stocks on it. But I do want to put something a bit different on here, even though it doesn't match. Um, and I, I think the, the drag SPLs look really good on here. Um, it has kind of has that deep dish look, kind of, similar to the uh, stocks. But I think this one just looks a bit better, in my opinion. I think it goes very well with this build, um, especially in the black. I think that looks fantastic. Um, let me show you guys the other tire design. So there you go. Those are the only two tire designs currently in online. Um, and if you want the old one, you have to find a, a vehicle that has them stock. So that's the only way you can get this old off-road tread pattern. But yeah, that's that there. Uh, windows, black them out. Oh, looks so much better. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All blacked out. It looks fantastic. And there is no secondary for this. So you would think the secondary would be like, you know, the grill area, the, the bumpers and stuff. But no, that's just forced matte black. Okay. All right, let's uh, exit to ground here. Usually I don't go, you know, normal black build on a car. But I mean, you gotta admit, on a van, like there's just <laughs> on this specific van, it just looks cool. It, it goes with it. I mean, this thing in white to me just looks terrible. You know, just some colors like that. But uh, for the headlights, everything does work, as you can see. Uh, the low beams are just the actual headlights, and then high beams would be the fogs at the uh, by the grill area, and then the roof lights. So, yeah, interior. Let me go in here. Just copy and paste from normal Rumpo and most vans in game. Uh, back seats, you got two separate seats back there. This is a four-seater, and I'll open all the doors and stuff after we're done taking it for a drive. Um, all right, it's floored here. It is a four by four. So I believe there's only two four by four vans in game. This one, and then the Yuga Classic four by four. And fun fact, the Yuga Classic four by four, when it first released, it was rear wheel drive, but then in one of the DLCs, they they, uh, they updated it and they made it 4x4, four four. <laughs> so fun little fact there. Let's take a few corners here. Oh my god. <laughs> now this thing is top heavy and it has a lot of like entry understeer and then when you're forcing it on the corner it does have some oversteer. It's a very weird vehicle to drive. And it's really top heavy so you gotta be careful when you hit certain curbs and stuff because it can't tip over. So you gotta be very very careful it does have like understeer when you initially turn in but then it does actually has like a lot less look at that wow this thing actually handles very well just don't hit a curb or a weird angled road or you will tip over <laughs> yeah okay no the handling is really good i can see why this is the this one and the gang burrito were the top two vans of the class for performance Hard corner here. Ooh, yeah, did not did not like that tight corner. All right, let's see how it does a little bit here with an obstacle. I usually use this here to kind of test. I think it's like a really good balance. Let's see how it does here. Should I mean, hopefully, I think it should do this well. Oh my god, no problem at all. Just, okay, we need something a bit more tough than that. That was like what? There's a hill there I never even noticed. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's take it at this. Oh man, I don't know about this. Uh, okay, I kind of forced this to the side, but I mean, it still did it. Let's try one more, a little more aggressive here. I mean, it's not gonna do this. Like I, 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 well, let's try. <laughs> this, this is too much of an angle. I highly, highly doubt this. Yeah, no, it's, it's like literally almost straight up in the air. But look at that, it wants to. It's like, <laughs> it's just, it wants to. All right, we already did this angle here. Let's force it, let's try to see if we can keep it straight. Man, that is, you gotta admit, that's impressive. That's actually very, very impressive. That's what 4x4 four four does. And it picks up speed very well. Powers up these hills like no problem. Look at that. Wow. Picks up speed really quick. Oh, oh. We tipped it over. We did tip it over. Uh-oh. Now we're sliding. 
Ouch. Okay, we're good. I broke a window. Whoopsie. And now it's struggling a bit. Uphill. There it goes. And once it picks up speed, though, it, it moves. Yeah, I mean, it's really top-heavy for off-roading. You can see me kind of struggling a bit here. See, when, look at that. When you you got to be very careful how you land. Yeah, this is... um. I think definitely more for like slow paced off roading. It just, it just depends on the obstacles and stuff, uh, because high pa paced off roading, you're definitely gonna have uh, issues because this thing is very very top heavy. Look at that! Oh yeah, it just wants to go on two wheels. <laughs> I like it though. I really do. This is a very very cool van, and usually most people don't say that vans are cool, but this thing is. <laughs> it really is. All right, let's open all the doors and stuff. Before I do that, though, let me let me show you guys something on this. Um, so just like most of the um, armored vehicles in game, um, the like the Shafter V12 armored, for example, or the Cognoscenti armored, uh, this one does have bullet-resistant windows where the windows do survive a few bullets before you know the, the, the glass shatters and the bullets go through. So you can demonstrate that here. You can see they are bullet-resistant up to a certain point here. Very, very cool, and it's all of them. So it's the sides and the windshield. Very, very cool. Of course, next gen, you got that awesome glass shards that appear. I love that. I mean, not bad. I mean, that's that's pretty... Now the bullets are going through. I mean, that's pretty resistant. It's not, not bad at all. Not bad. How many rounds we got here? We can test it, actually. We got 60. Let's see how many it takes to go through. I mean, I'm doing it in a single spot, but I think, I think that's pretty much going through there. Oh no, wait. There, boom. What is that like? Oh, not bad. Oh shit. Not bad at all. What is it like? 15 rounds or so? Be 49. Yeah, 15 give or take rounds. It's not. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. We started off with 60, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um. So yeah, not not bad. I mean, I mean, technically it was 16, but I mean, give or take a bullet or so, depending on the weapon and all that. So, yeah, not bad at all. All right, let's uh, open up our van with a bunch of broken windows. <laughs> okay, engine model here. That is, what the heck is this? That's terrible. That is awful. Those valve covers, like, what is that, man? That's. <laughs> The intake manifold looks like a a rug. I don't, it's just it's just absolutely terrible. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, no, that's 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 really bad. That's probably from the original Rumpo. Um, doors open up here, and the, we do have the sliding doors. Love that. And the back opens up like that. Okay. And fun fact: this thing does have a side ladder, and the ladder the the door actually does clip through a ladder. Let me try to show that here. Boom! You can see it. They're kind of clipping through a ladder <laughs> it's a that, I mean that's a bit of an issue there but it's GTA who cares right I mean not everything has to be perfect but I mean most people probably won't even notice that but once you see it you can't unsee it so you're welcome <laughs> again four seater I think it's cool is it worth 130 grand plus you gotta add upgrades right I mean of course you're gonna upgrade this if you're gonna mess around with it off-road I mean you're, you're well in this thing over two hundred thousand dollars is it worth it I don't know um, for that amount of money, there's a lot of other vehicles you can get online or maybe customize some of your other cars. And the fact that this thing has no customization, it costs 130 grand. I don't know, but some people could argue, well, you know, it has bullet resistant windows, so I guess that's something. But the no customization thing is a bit annoying, even though you can also argue that the parts that are on it is sort of like forced customization already on there, which I guess sort of makes sense in a way. But yeah, controversial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is it worth 130 grand? I mean, obviously, considering current prices of cars at GTA Online, it's definitely worth it. But uh, I don't know. Maybe back then, I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think I would say it's worth it back then in 2016 when it released. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Remember to let me know down below in the comments what vehicle from late 2015 or do you want to see me customize next? Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.